Hello, my name is Angela with Freedom Mobile Living. Thanks for joining me today. Today I want to kind of talk about my three years being a nomad. What do I think about it? How do I feel? Do, am I glad I made the decision? All of those things are tied up into one. And believe me, I, went, I have looked at both sides. I have uh, maybe brought my memories back to try to think, okay, how did I feel about this? How did I feel about that? But to be honest with you, I have three years and I wouldn't change it for the world. I can't imagine locking myself down into something that I'm, I have to stay at, like a sticks and bricks again. I'm done with having a house. I'm done living that way. And reason being is because every time I lived in a house, I always got to a point where I would get bored because I had a tendency to just lay around, have a tendency to watch TV, have a tendency for those four walls to capsize me. And sometimes it wasn't even because I was trying to do it. Sometimes it was a win the winter where your head was so cold outside that you couldn't go anywhere. Or it was so blasted humid and hot that you couldn't go anywhere. So in reality, where I'm at now, I have to go where it's comfortable. And if it's too hot or too cold, I have to do something about it. But it doesn't prevent me from going outside. It doesn't prevent me from exploring different areas. I like the beauty of being free to go where I choose to go. I've tried so many different ways the other way and I never realized what that depression was. I never realized why I was feeling the way I was. I wasn't happy about life. I wasn't fulfilled by it. It wasn't until, now I didn't just all of a sudden overnight decide to become a no man and live in a vehicle. This is something I had to learn over time. So when I first started, I went into a RAV4, which I have now, but I had a, another RAV4 and I did that. And then I had visions of a van. I thought, oh boy, a van would be nice. I'd watch videos with people with vans. I'd say, oh, that must be nice to have a van, have that much room and do all that. So I did that. You know, I sold my company, I had an extra vehicle, so a van, a ProMaster. I said, oh, let me try to live in it. So that's what I did. At that time, I was doing a hot dog vending, so it made sense because we needed something to travel or take the hot dog cart uh, in order to go to events. But I didn't like it. I felt like it was a tin box. It's funny, it's smaller than the RAV4, but I felt like it was almost like a, a prison for me. I don't know why I felt that way, I just did. I was also limited. I didn't feel like moving or going with it all the time because it's not something that's small like a car where you can fit in, where you can drive in, where you can, where you can sneak in somewhere and sneak out. With the van, it was conspicuous. Everybody knew it was a van. Everybody knew probably somebody was living in it, although I tried to make it incognito. I just didn't think it was advantageous. And then I thought to myself, income. Okay, if I wanted to make a little extra income, how would I do that? Can't do rideshare no more. I enjoy rideshare, so I had to quit doing rideshare. And then I went into deliveries and said, okay, let me do deliveries. Let me see if I like it doing deliveries. Well, I didn't. I really didn't. I mean, I did it for, uh, I think, almost a year. Uh, or no, maybe not eight, eight months, eight months. I did it for eight months and I figured, my God, this would be nice to have all that extra room. But really, what does it do? The only room I really need is to lay down and go to bed. I mean, in the van, yeah, you can, you know, create something where you can sit on the side of the bed and then you can watch TV or do whatever. You got your clothes hung up on hangers opposed to what I do now. I have to fold them up. And then I found myself starting to collecting more so getting more so adding more material things because i had the room so i went ahead and added to it it really became a real pain in the butt where i really were, was not happy i realized one day hey i didn't like this i don't care what other people like about vans and stuff they can like it all they want but i didn't do this nomad living so i could go track a truck with a van out into some darn desert or out to some camping area and sit there and be a camper i didn't do it to be a camper that was not my forte my forte to do it was to get the independence lower cost independence and freedom so then what i do i end up selling the van and then I bought myself another RAV4. 
I did. It got to a point when I had the van, I was missing a RAV4, crazy. Because it's not that much space if you think about it compared to a van. But I feel more secure with it. I know he got used to it, but I, uh, like Bob Wells told me once, he says, if you really want to make it successful, make sure everything you do is comfortable for you. Because all of us are different. So that's what I did. The first thing I did was a bed. I had to have a bed that I could lay on, feel comfortable, not wake up with aches and pains, not wake up in the middle of the night because I'm uncomfortable, but make sure I'm really have a good night's sleep because that's the most important thing. The other thing is I don't like clutter. So it wasn't like I could have a bunch of stuff to put in the van. Uh, I didn't like the clutter. In the RAV4, I, I decided, uh, I, not really decided, I, I was taught by the pure essence of being a nomad and having a RAV4, I was taught on to minimize. Why? Because every time I didn't minimize, it was clutter. And to me, that's aggravation, that's anxiety, high anxiety, frustration, all those things came into play. So I took my whole wardrobe and I started downsizing. What's my favorite five shirts? What's my favorite five underwear? What's my favorite two long pants, three shorts? What's my favorite things that I need to carry with me and have it with me? And so that's what I did. And so I minimized how much I have. Now, if you look in the back of my RAV4 right now, if you look at it right now, you would say, ain't no one living in that thing, right? I have window coverings that will hide the windows so it makes it nicer so when I sleep at night, you know, someone walking by isn't going to see somebody laying down in the back of the RAV. Those seats fold all the way down, which helps a lot, and then I minimize the amount of stuff I do have. I, when I first started out, oh my God, I did the, probably the biggest mistake I ever made is I started going out and getting a, a cooler. I started out with a Yeti. Then I went in with one you could plug into your battery, you know, plug into your cigarette lighter, and that way you can have a small little refrigerator. The only trouble is every time I had it and I went to go get in it, I really didn't have that many things in there that I really needed something to cool it. I really didn't. Uh, I thought it was more of an inconvenience to move it and to move it around in order to adjust things. And then a lot, nine times out of 10, what happens is you'll, in a, in a Yeti or it's a, you know, where you put ice in it, what do you do? You get water in your food and then that destroys the food. I find it a lot easier to do it the way I do. Uh, since I'm on the road, I'm a nomad, I can stop anywhere. So I'll stop at a grocery store and uh, I'll shop for that particular meal. Uh, in the breakfast, for, and I've already taken care of the breakfast. I, I generally eat oatmeal in the, in the morning, and I get my hot water from a gas station. Uh, Planet Fitness. Thank God to Planet Fitness. My hat's off to it. Not only does it make sure that I, I do spend some time on the treadmill, because every time you walk in, there's treadmills. So I spend time on a treadmill, but I do the hydro massage. I do the tanning to make me feel good. And I also use the showers. So... Planet Fitness, I've never had an issue with it. Everywhere I've gone across the country, I've always utilized the Planet Fitness, and I've enjoyed it. I really have. It gets me out, gets me to do something, especially as you get older. You want to sit around more because you're, you know your, your joints hurt, you know. Uh, but this type of life gets me out of the vehicle, gets me to do things, gets me to go see things. It forces me to do things. And that way I'm just not locked into a sticks and bricks that I have to go back to every day and worry about paying the mortgage, worry about paying the utilities for what? To sleep in it? I could do a lot easier by living the way I chose to live. Another thing I did was a solar panel. Oh my God, I went through a, a, a big uh, ordeal with that. Because solar panel is important. And the reason being is because you need some type of energy at night. Because you have to at least run fans. You know, you have to at least run fans in your vehicle. And with the fans, uh, I do it in different ways. Depending on the heat, depending on the cold. So, but the fans I always run. Every night I run fans and just keep the air moving. And that makes a big difference. Uh, where I sleep, I don't hang out. So, I don't eat where I uh, sleep. I don't, 
I don't hang out and I go if I want to hang out I get up in the morning I leave where I'm sleeping and I go to hang out wherever I want to hang out if I'm driving I go drive if I want to go stop for a minute and go have lunch maybe by a pier or by you know oh by a, a mountain I can do that one thing nice about this is there's a couple California for some reason I like it and everybody I speak to I ask why you like it and they don't really know they just know they do I feel the same way every time I go into California I feel like I love it and I don't know why maybe it's a lifestyle maybe uh, I don't really know why I just know every time I go there I feel really good so I enjoy California. I don't want to get to a point where I can't go into California. I don't want to live in California, high prices and everything. I want to be able to go there. And so now I choose to do that. So throughout periods of the life, where I go is depicted based on weather. Now I'm right where I'm at now for two reasons. Main reason is because my son lives here and I wanted to come down and visit him and see my grandchild. And that's why I came here. It's not, if it, it will surely is, wasn't my pick because I can't stand humidity. I got out of Michigan because I couldn't stand the humidity. I couldn't stand the bugs and definitely couldn't stand the cold. I got tired of the cold. So I come down here, I got more humidity because of being in Florida. And you got, I mean, you're talking about bugs. It's like uh, Michigan on steroids. It really is. There's more bugs. I've seen more bugs here and they're all over. So you can't even avoid them. They're just part of life down here. So Florida isn't my favorite place. Believe me, it's not. And I don't know why. I wouldn't mind probably on a vacation spot to come here for a period of time and then leave and enjoy it. I would like that. But as far as living here, I could never live in the state. I don't know how people stay cool at night. I really don't. And nomads. Other nomads in Florida, either they don't mind sweating or they don't mind being dirty. I don't know. I know one thing when I got into this life, I said to myself, there's no way am I going to turn it into where it smells like my, a bedroom, a dirty bedroom, dirty clothes. I wanted to maintain the cleanliness, and I have done that. Now, I clean my vehicle, I don't know, three, four times a week. Uh, since I have all this extra time because I don't have a house, right, I can detail the vehicle uh, as if I was going to work on my house. Uh, one of the things I do do is with the solar panel, I used to have it where it was installed up above uh, on the crossbars up here. And now I don't do that. I have a portable uh, solar panel I pull out uh, because I can charge my battery uh, not the battery in the car, but the separate battery, auxiliary battery. I can charge those batteries uh, by running the vehicle. So I run the vehicle and charge it that way. And when I'm not running the vehicle, I can charge it with a solar, portable solar panel, which makes it convenient for me. I don't like cumbersome. Like I said, I don't like clutter. So I don't want to keep on putting a bunch of stuff in here. Uh, so I don't. Now, as far as eating and stuff, let's talk about that. When I first started uh, being a nomad, of course, I had to have the stove. I had to have the pans. I had to have this. I had to have that. And I had so much storage. I started with, you know, I had the solar panel. I had the carrier up on top. I also had a, a box in the back uh, on the hitch. So, I mean, I had storage, more storage than I really needed. And then I realized that, uh, some of the things I was going through that it really was... I was just carting these things around. I wasn't using them often enough to really make it part of my life. So I realized that like when I go in the store now, I, I was in the store the other day with my son and he said, hey dad, why don't you get this? And I'm thinking, yeah, I need that. Like I need to carry it around. I don't need anything. I have everything at my disposal. I really do. And if I want to eat, like I say, I stop somewhere, I pick up some fruit, I might make a salad, whatever I put together, but I put together. Sometimes I go out to eat. Now for one person, it's not very expensive. And I can probably pretty much eat almost anywhere because I do like to fish down there. So it's nice to go out to eat and eat some fish. So I do like to fish down here. Uh, but I try to minimize what I have to do and what I have to move. Could you imagine whatever I'm carrying in the back right whatever I'm carrying back there I have to move it in order to set up my bedroom and then in the morning I have to move it in order to set up 
enough space for my riders to come in and make it not look like because you've got to realize uh, with rideshare i do airport runs so i need room to put luggage so how do i put my stuff in here and then how do i put their luggage in here now if you can look back here like i showed you earlier you can't even see nothing way back that's because it doesn't take up that much space and there's cubby holes inside this vehicle which i use as storage comes in really like my laundry detergent and stuff i always put it in a cubby hole and there's a lot of things i put in cubby holes but i have a place for everywhere you also have the area underneath it where the tires at the spare tire i utilize every space in here even the uh, little side things on the door i utilize those now the ones in the back because there's passengers that go in there i have uh, water bottles back there and that way it's complimentary water that they can have but anyhow, this is something I've done on this being a nomad. Uh, a lot of people don't understand it, and I understand that. I don't understand why people would like to be locked into a house. I, you know, I don't understand that part of it. So we do what we do for each other, you know, what we enjoy and what we like to do. And that's really what it's all about, is to do what we enjoy. All of us are different. Some people said, oh, I could never do that unless I had a trailer in the back. I tried that, I thought about that, and then I thought, where are you gonna put that trailer when you roll into a town? Where's that trailer going? Right, there's nowhere to really put it, and you put it anywhere you have, there's a chance of it being towed, there's a chance for the people that own the property not like it, whether that be Walmart or, or a grocery store, whatever it is. I didn't want the hassle. I didn't get into this to have a bunch of hassle. So I like the fact that I can roll into the city Right, I can have it into where I can take ride share. I can turn on my app. I can go ahead and pick up passengers and start making money if I need to. One beauty thing of this is I can travel from Florida to California without really cost me anything because I supplement that cost with income with ride share. Does that make sense? I can go anywhere. I, it's, it, most people, when they go travel, go on vacation, they got to come up with money to do it. I don't have to take money out of my savings in order to do that. I can supplement it by doing ride share along the way. Now, some people say, how do you do ride share? Every well, I can. <laughs> There's some cities I can't go in, states I can't go in, like California, because they have uh, different laws than the majority of the states. If the, if the laws in the states I go to are similar, then I can open up in any city. I've driven in Memphis, I've driven in Arkansas, in Indiana, I've driven in Nebraska, and also Texas. So, I mean, I've driven all over, and I've never had an issue when I go into the city. Now, let's say I go into a city and I can't do it, because that state, I didn't realize it, that state's laws are different. Then I do DoorDash. I do whatever else. I, and I also have my digital marketing I'm doing as well. So, in some cases, I don't need to make a lot of money. Uh... Especially my overhead so low, I'm really low, and I've gotten it that way because I don't have debt, and uh, that's why I, I only live this lifestyle by having minimal amount of debt and also trying to maximize my uh, profitability and making sure that I have security, financial security in the future. I have it tomorrow, and if there's something I really want to do, I can go ahead and do it. So I'm not saying the future isn't going to be where I have home bases because I have thought about that. I thought about having a home base on different parts of the country, and that way when I went there, then I had a place to go, and I, it wasn't all about living in the vehicle. But I don't know if that would be feasible. I've thought about it. I really haven't done anything about it, and I don't know if I'm gonna, but only the future will tell. Uh, through life, I always challenge myself, so I'm always asking these questions to myself. If I'm gonna think about doing that, how would that look? What would you do if this happened? What would you do if that happened? So I'm always playing uh, the nation's sayer on everything I decide to do. So with this, it's in the head. I think about it. I visualize it. I dream about it. But I haven't done anything with it. If you like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you want other people to know about this and how to do what I have done, or even similar, or you just like watching what I have done, because not many. I don't think anybody's really done the way I've done it where I'm a nomad, I do ride share, I do other income producing remote income, and I have the freedom to do and go where I wanna go. If you like it, go ahead and subscribe. Now, the way other people can uh, see this as well, 
I appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for spending the time with me. And have a great, fantastic day. Bye-bye.